Hello students, welcome to AKS. Today we will deal with the gist of PIB for the fourth week of August. President of India inaugurates the first World Youth Conference on Kindness in New Delhi. So what are the details of this conference? Addressing the conference, Mr. Ramnath Kovan said that the ideals of Mahatma Gandhi are relevant across times and are especially required in today's times. His ideals remain relevant amidst current concerns like peace and tolerance, terrorism and climate change. He also said that the strife arises because of deep-rooted prejudice and that education is to play a vital role in removing these prejudices. So what is this World Youth Conference on Kindness? It is being organized for the first time. Okay, It is being organized by the UN, UNESCO, that is the United Nations Education, Social and Cultural Organization and the Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Education for Peace and Sustainable Development along with the Ministry of HRD, Human Resource Development of India. What is the aim of this conference? The, the conference aims to impart critical competencies such as empathy, compassion, mindfulness and critical inquiry in the global youth so as to inspire, empower and enable them to transform themselves and build a long-lasting peace in their communities. So the youth leaders from more than 27 countries are participating in this conference. And what is the theme of this conference? The theme of this conference is Vasudaiva Kutumbam. That is Gandhi for contemporary world. So as to celebrate the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. So please remember the theme of this conference. That is the World Youth Conference on Kindness. The theme is Vasudaiva Kutumbam. And when, when was this conference held? It was held between 28th to 23rd August of 2019. Okay. Next, the Vice Chairman of Niti Aayog discussed the implementation of Rice Fortification Pilot Scheme with the Union Minister of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution. So what are the details of this, scheme, of this uh, initiative? During the meeting, it was decided that for effectively tackling the problem of malnutrition in India, a roadmap will be charted out by the Department of Food and Public Distribution for taking the pilot scheme on rice fortification throughout India. For effective implementation, the government will, through a bottom-up approach, take into consideration all stakeholders including the state governments in the economic policy making. So what is fortification? Fortification is a complementary strategy to fight mal malnutrition which involves the addition of key vitamins and minerals. So to put it simple, fortification is nothing but to add significant vitamins and minerals so, so that the food that the people are consuming is rich in these vitamins and minerals so addition of these vitamins and minerals such as iron iodide zinc vitamins a and d to staple foods such as rice wheat oil milk salt are done so as to improve the nutritional content the government had advised all states and union territories especially those that distribute wheat through public distribution system so as to fortify wheat flour to tackle the problem of malnutrition in india the Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh presented the Anubhav Award 2019 and also inaugurated the All India Pension Adalat. So what is this Anubhav? The Anubhav portal was, was created in the year 2015 with a vision to preserve the rich experience of retired government officials in a digitalized format so that the future generations as the future governments can make use of this experience to effectively deliver public goods. Okay. It is envisaged that the rich experience of the retired uh, officials will be pers pres preserved for future generations to learn and explore knowledge on various aspects of governance, culture and development history of a particular region. The Anubhav Awards were instituted in the year 2016 to encourage more retirees to submit their write-ups regarding their experience of working with the government on the portal. The current award series was the, was the fourth annual series of awards. Now let us look into what is the All India Pension Adalat. The Pension Adalats were organized by various ministries and departments at different parts of the country. The Pension Adalat brings all stakeholders on a common table that is the aggrieved pensioner who had not got his due pension and the concerned department of the government 
the bank or the CGHS representative wherever relevant so that such cases can be, can be settled across the table within the framework of extant rules. The states and union territories are also conducting such pension adalats. It is an initiative of the Department of Pension and Pensioners Welfare. So, please remember this, that the All India Pension Adalat is an initiative of the Department of Pension and Pensioners Welfare. So, last year, out of the 12,849 cases that were taken up by the Pension Adalat, 9,368 cases were resolved. Okay. Next, Niti Aayog released the report on Composite Waste Management Index 2.0. So, what is this Composite Waste Management Index? It is an important tool to assess and improve the performance of states or union territories in efficient management of water resources. This has been done through a first of its kind, first of its kind water data collection exercise in partnership with the Ministry of Jal Shakti, Ministry of Rural Development and all the states and union territories. The index would provide useful information for the states and also the concerned central ministries or departments, enabling them to formulate and implement sustainable strategies for better management of water resources. So what are the details of the report released? In the report released, Gujarat holds on to its rank 1 in the reference year 2017-18, to followed by Andhra Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Goa, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. In the northeastern and Himalayan states, Himachal Pradesh has been adjudged number one in the year 2017 to 18, followed by Uttarakhand, Tripura, and Assam. Among the union territories which had submitted data for the first time, Puducherry has been adjudged number one. In terms of the incremental change in the index over the year 2016 to 17 level, Haryana holds number one position in general states, and Uttarakhand ranks at first position amongst the northeastern and Himalayan states. Thus, on an average, 80% of the states assessed on the index over the last three years have improved their water management scores with an average improvement of at least plus 5.2 points. Next, in a historic milestone, an MOU was signed between the Indian Army and the Tata Realty and Housing. So what is this MOU about? This MOU enables the personnel of Indian Army to immediately take over dwelling units in 13 ready-to-move-in projects of the Tata Realty Pan-India spread across 10 cities including Gurugram, Chennai, Bengaluru, Pune, among others at a discounted price. This also heralds a new era for the Army Welfare Housing Organization AWHO, which has always endeavored to provide quality housing for Army personnel who are deployed in remote locations across the country. The Army Welfare Housing Organization will now facilitate the acquisition of homes from reputed private builders at a discounted rather than discounted price rather than building them for the soldiers. Next, recently in the Union Budget 2019-20, the Finance Minister announced the Sapka Vishwas Legacy Dispute Resolution Scheme of 2019. So what is the scheme? The two main components of the scheme are dispute resolution and amnesty. The dispute resolution component is aimed at liquidating the legacy cases of central excise and service tax that are subsumed in GST and are pending in litigation at various forums. The amnesty component of the scheme offers an opportunity to taxpayers to pay the outstanding tax and be free of any consequence under the law. So the most attractive aspect of the scheme is that it provides a substantial relief in the tax dues for all categories of cases as well as full waiver of interest, fine and penalty. As the objective of the scheme is to free as, a, free as large a segment of the taxpayers from the legacy taxes as possible, the relief given thereunder is substantial. The scheme is specially tailored for a free to free a large number of small taxpayers of their pending disputes with the tax administration. Thus, the government urges the taxpayers and all concerned to avail Sapka Vishwas Legacy Dispute Resolution Scheme 2019 and make a new beginning. Next, recently, the Union Minister of Home Affairs chaired the 24th meeting of the Western Zonal Council at Goa in Panaji. So what, is, what are the zonal councils? There are five zonal councils, namely Western, Eastern, Northern, Southern and Central Zonal Council, which were set up under the State Reorganization Act 1956 
six. So please remember that zonal councils are statutory bodies. Okay, so as to foster interstate cooperation and coordination among the states, the zonal councils are mandated to discuss and make recommendations on any matter of common interest in the field of economic and social planning, border disputes, linguistic minorities, or interstate transport. They are a regional forum. of cooperative endeavor for states linked with each other economically politically and culturally being compact high level bodies especially meant for looking after the interests of the respective zones they are capable of focusing attention on specific issues taking into account regional factors while keeping the national perspective in view as well okay that is about the zonal councils next recently the draft national resource efficiency policy was released so what is the context national resources form the backbone of any economic development india as one of the fastest growing economies with a gdp of 2.6 trillion us dollars has increased its material consumption to 6 times thus enhancing resource efficiency and promoting the use of secondary raw materials has emerged as a strategy for ensuring that the potential trade off between growth resource constraints and environmental well being can be minimized the ministry of environment forest and climate change released the draft national resource efficiency policy so please remember that the draft national resource efficiency policy is released by the ministry of environment forest and climate change So what is this policy about? The draft national resource energy policy, energy efficiency policy, envisions a future which en- with environmentally sustainable and equitable economic growth, resource security, healthy environment of air, land, and water, and restored ecosystems with rich ecology and biodiversity. The draft national resource efficiency policy is guided by the principles of reduction in primary resource consumption. to sustainable levels in keeping with achieving the sustainable developmental goals and staying within the planetary boundaries also creation of higher value with less material through resource efficient and circular approaches okay waste minimization material security and creation of employment opportunities and business models beneficial to the cause of environmental protection and restoration so that is about the policy next the union minister of state tourism and culture will inaugurate the state tourism ministers conference so what is this conference about this day long conference has been organized by the ministry of tourism government of india and will be attended by the state tourism ministers secretaries of tourism and senior officials from states and union territories the conference will provide a platform for ministry of tourism government of india so as to apprise the states or union territories about the new initiatives taken and those in the pipeline so as to get valuable feedback from the states or union territories on the same the conference will also help to highlight areas where active cooperation of states or union territories is required and at the same time to learn about the initiatives being taken up by the states or union territories for the development of tourism so what are the various subjects on which the discussions would be held such as developing an all encompassing one stop solution including information on tourism related services through web based application and a grievance redressal mechanism through twitter and tourist helpline adoption of adventure tourism bed and breakfast or homestay scheme guidelines by the states would also be given the status of projects sanctioned under the swadesh darshan and prasad scheme and implementation of the public finance management system have also been taken up would also be taken up as part of the discussions next chandrayaan 2 inserted into the lunar orbit the second moon mission of india chandrayaan 2 has been precisely inserted in the lunar orbit so what is this chandrayaan 2 chandrayaan 2 is an isro that is indian space research organization mission comprising an orbiter and a soft lander vikram carrying a rover pragyan okay so the soft lander has been named vikram to commemorate mr vikram sarabhai okay the primary objective of chandrayaan 2 is to demonstrate the ability to soft land on the lunar surface and operate a robotic rover on the surface 
The scientific goals of this mission include studies of lunar topography, mineralogy, elemental ab abundance, the lunar exosphere, and signatures of hydroxyl and water ice. The soft landing will be near the lunar south pole. Okay. Next, make in India in defense. The Union Minister Sri Rajnath Singh emphasized the need to progressively reduce dependence of India on foreign manufacturers and indigenously develop comprehensive capabilities in the defense sector. He also referred to the Technology Development Fund TDF scheme which has been established under the aegis of DRDO that is the Defense Research and Development Organization so as to promote self-reliance in defense technology as part of Make in India initiative. So what is this Technology Development Fund scheme? This TDF scheme has been set up by the Government of India under the Make in India initiative. This is to create an ecosystem for enhancing cutting-edge technology capability by inculcating R&D culture in the industry for building indigenous state-of-art systems for defense applications. The Technology Developmental Fund scheme aims for the development of defense and dual-use technologies that are currently not available with the Indian defense industry or have not been developed so far. Next, the 15th Finance Commission discuss the health sector. Okay, the 15th Finance Commission headed by Sri N.K. Singh held a meeting with the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and other senior officials from the ministry recently. The high-level group presented the recommendations of the report on the health sector on the following aspects, which include regulatory framework on, of the health sector, human resource for the health sector, public health expenditure, strengthening of public health delivery system, and Ayush with an integrative approach. So, this was about the gist of Press Information Bureau articles for the fourth week of August. Thank you. Have a good day.